It only took 12 years, but we finally got printed support for the Advanced Crystal Beasts. I am pumped, and there's no way they could be bad and significantly underwhelming after all this time, right? Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel, and today, as mentioned before the intro, we are going to be talking about the new Advanced Crystal Beasts that will be released in Animation Chronicle. Now, I know that many people are huge fans of Crystal Beasts as a whole, myself included. They are my favorite deck of all time, and I've always been sad about the fact that they've just never really been viably usable uh, outside of casual play. So, with the announcement of the Structure Deck coming up, plus these cards that are in the uh, Battles of Legend set for us and the Animation Chronicle for the OCG, I was definitely pumped this morning when I woke up and saw that there was a bunch of new Crystal Beast support and that we were finally getting the Advanced Crystal Beasts printed. I have read the effects a little, and I have to tell you, I'm a little bit disappointed. We'll talk about why, but we're going to go through them all together. As you guys, before I get started, to like the video if you do enjoy the content and conversation, and leave a comment down below. Let me know what you guys think about the Advanced Crystal Beast. Do you think these are good? Do you think these are bad? What, uh, what exactly are we thinking on this? And if you're not subscribed already, hit the subscribe button and click the bell icon to stay notified with upcoming videos and releases. So, Advanced Crystal Beast Sapphire Pegasus is the first one. And it has this line, this, this little line of text in the very first beginning here that says, If Advanced Dark is not in the field zone, send this card to the graveyard. Now, every one of the Crystal Beasts has this effect, which is really, really frustrating and disappointing. However... However, I feel like we should take a look at Advanced Dark first before we go any further, so let's do that. Advanced Dark, if you don't remember, is a field spell card originally released in Return of the Duelist. It was an OCG card that was in the OCG for a while, and we got it as an import here. Uh, and it's been reprinted a few times since, but that's the OG printing. So it is a field spell that says all Crystal Beast monsters on the field and in the graveyard become dark. If an ultimate Crystal monster attacks, negate the effects of the attack target during that battle phase. During damage calculation, if a Crystal Beast monster you control battles and you would take damage, you can send one Crystal Beast monster from your deck to the graveyard, and if you do, you take no battle damage from that battle. So this card as a whole has some cool artwork, but is otherwise really uninspiring. It doesn't do all that much. I suppose making all Crystal Beasts on the field dark does give you some cheeky super poly options you may not have had otherwise, but we're really grasping for straws if that's what we're looking at, and the rest of it is so battle reliant that it doesn't really do anything. So again, all of the new Crystal Beasts are going to require this card to be in a field zone in order to be played. I just wanted to get that out there first before we went any further into the video. Now, Advanced Crystal Beast Sapphire Pegasus says, If this card is summoned, you can place one of your Advanced Crystal Beast monsters that is banished in your hand, deck, or graveyard face-up in your spell and trap zone as a continuous spell. If this face-up card is destroyed in a monster zone, you can place it face-up in your spell and trap zone as a continuous spell instead of sending it to the graveyard. So, it basically is Crystal Beast Sapphire Pegasus with the added caveat that it can grab from the banished zone, which is neat, but it doesn't... It doesn't do anything more than that, and it requires advanced dark on the field. So basically, you're mandated to play a field spell that's not even that good and have it on the field, and in exchange, you're getting a slightly more buffed version of Sapphire Pegasus's original effect without anything kind of extra coming from it. So aside from the artwork, which is amazing and has been since it was released years ago on the anime, uh, this card is a massive letdown in my opinion. Next up, we've got Advanced Crystal Beast Cobalt Eagle, and this one says you can send this card from your hand or field to the graveyard, add one Advanced Dark from your deck to your hand. Once per turn, you can target one Advanced Crystal Beast card you control, either return it to the hand or place it on top of the deck. If this card is destroyed in a monster zone, you can place it face up in your spell and trap zone as a continuous spell instead of sending it to the graveyard. Going forward for the rest of this video, I'm not going to read that last effect because every Crystal Beast has it and it's standard and it's just going to save time and make it easier to go through the more important effects. Cobalt Eagle is actually pretty good. It's definitely a real upgrade over the existing Cobalt Eagle, and being able to search out your field spell certainly helps, although I wish they had made it such that it could get the advanced arc from deck or graveyard. That way, if the opponent did destroy it, you had easier ways to get it back. And the effect of being able to return any Crystal Beast card to your hand or top of the deck uh, is pretty good. The original Cobalt Eagle can only return it to the top of the deck, I believe, which is not super ideal in the in the sense that most of the time you're going to end up just 
setting up a draw for next turn, and it's way too slow, especially in the modern game. But this one definitely stands out as an improvement, specifically because of the ability to get to your cert your field spell, which is, you know, necessary in order to be able to play the rest of the deck. Advanced Crystal Beast Amber Mammoth, pretty cool upgrade there for the artwork, and it does say once per turn when your opponent activates a card or effect that targets an Advanced Crystal Beast card or cards and or Advanced Dark you control, quick effect, you can negate the activation. Once per turn when your Advanced Crystal Beast monster is targeted for an attack, you can negate the attack. So again, definitely a significant upgrade. The original Amber Mammoth can just redirect an attack to itself if your opponent attacks another Crystal Beast monster. This one is much better. It does protect your field spell, which is going to be quintessential towards this deck being viable at all. And by viable, I mean exclusively at a casual level. Uh, but being able to just once per turn, you know, negate something that would pop or at least target your field spell that includes things like Cosmic Cyclone and Twin Twisters is solid. And then, of course, I guess the attack negation is an added bonus, but again, it's just battle effects are very slow in the modern game, so that's not really adding anything to it. It's neat from a built-in protection standpoint, I suppose, and it isn't a hard once per turn, so if you do control multiple copies of this card for whatever reason, you are able to protect multiple times. Advanced Crystal Beast Topaz Tiger, which is probably my favorite artwork-wise of all of them, with the exception of Ruby, says, All Advanced Crystal Beast monsters you control gain 400 attack and defense. Also, all face-up monsters your opponent controls lose 400 attack and defense. So, again, definitely better than the original Topaz Tiger, which needed to attack in order to get the buff, but it's weighed down by the fact that Advanced Dark does need to be on the field. Reducing your opponent's monster stats is... Fine, it's definitely passable, but it's not doing anything crazy. It's just sort of, I almost wish it like b buffed your monsters by 400 and then reduced the opponent's monsters by 400 for each crystal beast like spell and trap you control, because then you'd be really looking at like a bit more power on that side of the card in order to be able to actually do some stuff. But of course, they can't give any cool archetypes, you know, broken or more powerful cards. They have to um, nerf them significantly. I actually wish this had some kind of special summon effect from the hand as an extender because we know the deck could definitely benefit from that. Advanced Crystal Beast Emerald Tortoise certainly looks cooler than the other Tortoise and is just all around better. Uh, once per turn, quick effect, you can target a face-up monster on the field, change its battle position. So this one could actually be in dual links with its full effect instead of losing the main phase two effect that the original has. Um, again, this is not that great. I mean, changing a face-up monster's battle position you know, if it was changing it to face down defense position or something would be cool and worth talking about. But this is not that. It's essentially just changing a monster's battle position and it targets. So I don't know. It just doesn't really do anything. It's an upgrade over the original, but not not by much and not in any ways that really make a huge difference. And then Advanced Crystal Beast Amethyst Cat. Your Advanced Crystal Beast monsters you control can attack directly, but when they do, the battle damage inflicted to your opponent is halved. So again, another upgrade over the original Amethyst Cat because only the cat could attack directly. Now all of them can, which is cute for sure and, and could definitely stack up to some damage pretty quick. But again, it's slow and it doesn't do anything beneficial because of requiring Advanced Dark to be on the field. And just a note, Advanced Dark being on the field means you have to send it to the graveyard. It does not destroy it, which means you can't even put it in the spell and trap zone if Advanced Dark isn't on the field. So it's not like you could even set up for some of the other spells. It's overall just really disappointing how heavy they went on these, uh, on these restrictions for this archetype. And then, of course, the one that is actually really strong but still hindered by that restriction is Advanced Crystal Beast Ruby Carbuncle. If this card is destroyed in a monster zone, you can place it face up. We know that part. If this card is treated as a continuous spell, you can special summon it, then as special summon as many Advanced Crystal Beast monster cards from your spell and trap zone as possible. You can only use this effect once per turn. This effect is massively powerful, and the original Advanced Crystal Beast Ruby Carbuncle that was in, like, the Tag Force games and that had the, you know, anime effect in certain simulators and games and whatnot had that effect, but you could just summon it, and then when it was summoned, it would trigger. So it's pretty much the same thing, although it did not have a hard once per turn. So this card alone is really, really strong for Crystal Beast. It gives you the ability to... It basically imagine Ruby Carbuncle, but you can trigger Ruby whenever you want instead of having to special it with another card. This card can self-trigger, meaning you can special summon and actually get some field advantage and board presence, but 
you have to control Advanced Dark, which is definitely a big drawback. So, it's a really good card. It is the best card that we got out of this reveal of the Advanced Crystal Beast. And I don't know if there's more cards coming in the Animation Chronicles set or not for Crystal Beast. I guess we'll see. I certainly wouldn't hate an Advanced Dark retrain if they're going to force us to play it, but we'll have to see what happens. Uh, Carbuncle is really good, though, and definitely the best one. It's a shame, too, that it doesn't just let you special summon any as many Crystal Beasts as possible. There really was no reason for these to be, like, archetype lock in advanced crystal beast specifically because as a whole they're already relatively weak cards that would benefit significantly from that effect but i'm really happy to see them get printed i'm just bummed out that like a, an archetype i've looked forward to for so long got really watered down especially when people like this these cards this deck if it was actually good or somewhat viable would you would think would translate to more money for Konami because it's definitely going to be a popular archetype. Like, it won some of the fan polls and stuff. It's it's a whole thing. So, let's take a look at a few of the support cards that go with this as well. And we're going to go ahead and start off with uh, Advanced Dark, which I talked about already. It just doesn't do much at all, so I wouldn't keep your hopes up in terms of this being something to chase down. The Secret Rare has already been cleared off the market, so from a value perspective, that one is long gone. And you'll have to wait because I'm sure people will start to list them. Crystal Bond might be one of the best individual spell cards for an archetype ever printed but of course it's crystal beast so that huge that huge sort of praise i'm heaping on it doesn't mean all that much in the grand scheme of things crystal bond says add one crystal beast monster from your deck to your hand and if you do place one crystal beast monster with a different name from your deck face up in your spell and trap zone as a continuous spell you can only activate one crystal beast uh, crystal bond per turn so again it's not only a searcher but it also sets you up in the zone this can get ruby carbuncle so this could take advanced carbuncle put it in the spell and trap zone and then set you up for other plays and what is cool is that the crystal beast spell and trap support does work directly with advanced crystal beast so it's not like they're locked to the original crystal so that is a saving grace i suppose but the effects aren't exactly powerful enough to move that needle too much rainbow bridge another really good card it's just searches out any of your crystal beast spells and traps so it, it deck thins it gets you to whatever you need when you need it you can obviously search out cards like crystal beacon which can get you pegasus which can then put you know advanced crystal beast ruby carbuncle and so on and so forth and just a note to the crystal beasts do work with the advanced crystal beasts it's just not backwards compatible for lack of a better term which is really unfortunate again but like you can summon regular pegasus and get an advanced crystal pegasus or any of the other ones out and the one thing that that does do is it gives you more names for rainbow dragon and your fusions and stuff so i suppose that is a possibility but these are all really good support pieces crystal beasts have long the joke has been that their actual spell and trap support is genuinely insanely powerful but the monsters are so bad that they don't do anything and that that seems to be the theme here so far but let's not forget we do have the structure deck coming up so there's very much a possibility that that could change if they give them some better support now looking at a few other cards crystal beast rainbow dragon which was just released in ghost from the past two known as rainbow dragon zenith and the ocg is a really good card and i think the best individual crystal beast monster uh, definitely a card to keep an eye on they're very cheap so if you have interest in playing this deck i would definitely recommend picking them up i think ghost from the past two was open so widely that even if people did want to chase after this card it just wouldn't really stick uh to the extent of any type of significant value spike right now but there is a while to go until the structure deck actually releases so just some food for thought but crystal beast rainbow dragon is really good you can basically special summon it if you control a crystal beast monster and that monster attacks but you can also banish it from your spell and trap zone and special summon a level four lower crystal beast from your deck and then search a rainbow dragon slash ultimate crystal monster so there's a lot going on there and it's definitely a really good piece of support overall for the deck and rainbow over dragon of course one of the fusion monsters pretty pretty solid effect when it's on the board in the sense that you contribute it to shuffle all cards on the field into the deck it does put a lot of pressure on the opponent and it's a little harder to get around because it does tribute as cost but again it does either need to tribute a level 10 ultimate crystal monster or use seven crystal beast monsters for its fusion summon um, I mean I guess you can dragons mirror it but again when you talk about seven different crystal beast monsters it's just there's a lot going on there, and of course, it's a good card, it just, you know, one I wanted to point out as a summon that does get a little bit of, you know, buff from this support, but overall, I just think it's really unfortunate that they went as hard with the, the neutering as they did on these cards. Well, that being said, that's going to go ahead and wrap up this video. What do you guys think of the new Advanced Crystal Beast? Do you think they're, you know, exciting? Do you think they're not going to be all that great? I'm curious to see what you guys think and what your overall opinions are. Let me know in the comments down below what you think, and I'll catch you in the next video. Peace.